What's up you guys, it's Kian Bravon, aka Coach Key, coming back to you with another video. If you are new to my channel, welcome, and if you are not new, welcome back. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and also tap the bell so that you are notified of every new video that I post. I usually post videos once or twice a week. You can always catch me here on this channel every Friday for Financial Freedom Friday where we talk about everything regarding finances and money. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I am going to be doing my December budget with me. Next Friday is December 1st. So next week I'll actually be doing the November budget report card. So the reason why I do them out of order is because my very last debt that I am paying off is not due until the end of the month. And when I do my budget report cards, I rather make sure that all of my numbers are exact as far as how much debt I paid off, what my debt balances are, et cetera, et cetera. So I flip them at the end of every month. So, um, I'll answer this question because I get this question a lot. Everyone always asks me where I get this planner from. This is a planner that I created myself. This is only a sample. I printed out the sample just to see, you know, how large the words were, the boxes and everything, make sure that they are functional. This planner will, the real planner will actually be about 240 pages and it will be available in the next 30 to 45 days or so. So the first page that I'm going to go over are my December expenses and I have this part of the planner kind of cut off because you won't really understand what's in that box so I don't want you to get distracted. So let's get started. So um, December has five weeks for me. I get paid every Friday. I am self-employed and on Fridays is when I usually do like my grocery shopping and stuff like that. So because of that, um, my budget numbers will be a little bit higher than last month because we have that extra week. So for groceries, I'm going to be budgeting $375. For personal, I'll be doing $125, and my personal and household are together. And restaurants will do $125, gas I'm going to do $125, shopping I'm going to go to $150, and that'll just help me with any like Christmas shopping that I decide to do. I'm not really a big shopper, I'm more of a I get you a card and kind of keep it moving, maybe $20 or something. No recreation, no miscellaneous. My property taxes are due on December 31st, so I went ahead and put that in. And then I have a Vimeo subscription for my videos, and that annual is coming up this month or December, so that is $59.99. So I actually did not total this up yet. So I'll go ahead and do that now. One, two, three. So this total is going to be $1,229.26. And it's usually, of course, not that high because I usually don't have these expenses in here. So for the left side over here, which are my normal fixed expenses, my January rent is going to be $810.70. And you guys will see this when I do my paycheck planning towards the end of this, but I always put the, the next month's rent in my budget with me, basically, because that's how I do my budgets. Um, electricity, I'm going to say $60.00. And this month it was actually $40.59, but I'm going to go ahead and go one more month where I kind of over budget and just kind of see if you do not know, because maybe you're new, I just moved into my townhouse at the end of September. So I'm still trying to get some of the bills like estimated a little bit better. <laughs> and then for gas, and this is gas like a utility, I'm going to also budget $60.00. This month it was $55.23 and it's starting to get pretty cold so I'll probably be turning the heat on sometimes during the day. I do not like heat at nighttime, but during the day I do. Um, don't have any of this stuff. Internet is $44.99. I don't have cable. Uh, health insurance 
for right now and actually in December I'll be looking to get health insurance but for right now I'll just put my chiropractor bill here which is $70 a month car insurance is $108.17 my renter's insurance I pay for the year my car note is $262.53 I have no student loans I actually paid my last student loan off in I believe March of this year no, maybe February, something like that. No credit cards. I am officially out of credit card debt. So the only other things, I do have some um, miscellaneous fixed expenses. I pay MailChimp $10 a month. And yes, you can still see that. Um, what else? I have HostGator, which is for all of my website hosting, and that is $11.95. And I have my financial success membership, which is $34.95. Um, an affiliate program that I am a part of where I'm able to sell a lot of different financial services and products, that's $50 a month. That's something that is new that's being added. And then uh, the last thing would be roadside assistance, and that is $7.99. So the total for this column will be $7.99. So the total for this column will be $1,531.28. And when I add that to the right column, we are at a total of $2,760.54. So I'm going to go ahead and turn to the monthly calendar. And I like to look at my bills on the monthly calendar so I can see which bills are due with which paydays or paychecks all right so i believe i have you guys zoomed in at this point so i've already done a little bit of pre-planning so that this video won't be as long as previous videos so i already have all of my stickers laid out the only thing i have to do is write down the name of the bill and how much it is so one of the things that i am doing new is i'm using uh, a couple of the larger payday stickers and the reason for this is because this month I'm projecting to get about 15 checks from various different sources so on these two days is when I get I guess you could say the most checks um, on those paydays so again I am self-employed I get paid every Friday this month I'm adding a new income source well really I was supposed to add it uh, in November but it's really going to be added in December um, and then these paydays over here are for my nursing job um, I actually am a registered nurse I've been a registered nurse for ooh wee, about six years now but I just got back into the nursing field uh, actually I just worked my first shift back um, last no it was actually Sunday Sunday of this week so I am back to doing that um, and really I'm doing that because I miss nursing. I was out of it for three years and also because I need something to kind of offset my taxes. I owe taxes every year and you guys are going to see how much my tax bill is that I have to pay this month. Um, and so I figured if I started working as a nurse again because I missed it, maybe I can offset my taxes a little bit by making sure that they overtax me on the front end of nursing so that it helps me on the back end with my self-employment. So uh, let's get started. Sorry, I have to explain that every time because people will start to get confused. Like, why does she have all these paydays? What is this stuff? All right, so um, on the first, I actually have three pay paychecks coming. So I'm just gonna write a big three. And every Friday, I pretty much have two or three paychecks for the most part. Um, my rent, is eight ten seventy and the seventy just comes from the money order basically and so this payday here 
I'm just gonna write payday in this sticker and also this one. These are my nursing job paydays. And let's see. So I don't have any bills due for this paycheck and I do for this one. So the first one that I have here, let's see, on the 14th, actually we're gonna go here. So don't mind me having to write these numbers in. I actually just realized that this is the one last error that I have in this planner, which was the whole purpose of me printing out a sample to make sure that I didn't have any errors. So I did mess up on the dates here, so I have to send that back off to the printer. Um, so on the 11th, I have two things due. The first thing is the Vimeo subscription, which I just talked about on the previous page. That's $59.99. And then my federal taxes are due. And my tax balance is $1,765.83. So... I'll talk about when I plan my paychecks, how I plan to pay that because I don't really feel like trying to cash flow it right now. Um, let's see. The next thing we have is on the 14th and that is for $10 and that is MailChimp. Then this is another payday where actually this is going to be four paychecks on this day which is going to be pretty cool then we have my internet is due which is charter and that is $44.99 sorry I think I put you out of focus just a little bit all right so the next things that I do are on the 19th and I have 108.17 and then also 70 and this is for Progressive, which is my car insurance. And then $70 is for my chiropractor. Have another payday there. And then the next thing we have is Whole Skater, which is $11.95. Another paycheck. And then this gas, even though it's like the symbol for gas for your car, I know no other way to be able to put my gas from my house there. So I'm just going to put it there, which is fire. And then I'm projecting $60. I don't know if I'm going to keep putting the projected amount for my electricity and gas in here. I might just start keeping it blank from here on out. I'm not really sure. And um, then we have $50 here. And that is for the affiliate program that I'm a part of. And so on the 23rd, we have $34.95. And that is for my financial success membership. Then on the 27th, we have the roadside assistance, which is $7.99. And I'll just write roadside for that. And then the 28th is the electricity bill, which I have electricity through Ameren. And I'm projecting $60. And then the last thing is my car note, which is through BMO Harris. And my car note is $262.53. And then the last thing we have over here is my property taxes. Yes, property taxes are now due. And that is due on the 31st. And that is 260, uh-oh, 269.27. And that should be about it. I'm not one of those people that has like a ton of bills. I keep the bare minimum, as minimum as possible. Some of these are really just business expenses and then others are, you know, miscellaneous things that you need like car insurance and stuff like that. My car note, hopefully I only have to deal with this for maybe like another six to 10 months or so. I'll be ready to get rid of that bill for sure. So the next thing I'm going to do 
is go to this blank page and I'm going to be using this to go ahead and plan out my paychecks. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is write in up here how much my budgeted amount is. And the budgeted amount contains my groceries, personal, restaurant, gas, and shopping. And so that equated to $900 which again, there are five weeks in the month, so the budget should be $180 a week. And I'm just going to check that to make sure. Yes, and then the only other thing I do need to make sure I write up here is my supplements, which are $60 a month. And I just write that up there to make sure that I don't forget to put that somewhere in my budget. So again, because I am self-employed, I cannot use my actual numbers. I don't know how much money I'm going to make. It's all based on commissions and sales and all of that stuff. So I pretty much just estimate and guesstimate. One tip that I always give in my budget with me, if you are somebody who is a 1099, you work on commission, sales, whatever, the best thing for you to do when you're budgeting is to... Um, underestimate for your salary or your commissions, your income, and then overestimate your bills. What that allows you to do is make sure that if your overestimated bills can fit into your underestimated income, when you make more income than that, then you're good to go. So in my October budget with me video, I believe I did my budget based on $2,500 for the month. Because I added a couple of income streams in November, November's budget was $3,500. This month, I'm going to up it to 4000 and I think that I'm just going to leave my base income there. Um, yeah, and that's still completely underestimating my income, but that will allow for me to kind of see things a little bit better because I know that 2500 and even 3500 is too low. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, write out my pay dates. For um, the very first week, and actually, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. I'm going to go ahead and write out my estimated income for the week. And again, I am underestimating. So I'll do $800 for the first week, $2,000 for the second week. I always get my biggest checks the second Friday of every month. And I'll probably start having a bigger paycheck on the 15th of every month as well after December. Um, and those are my residual checks. 800 there. We'll do... Oh, wait. Hmm. 500 here. 300 here. And I think that's going to be more than... Yeah, so I'm going to be doing my budget based off of, and I hope you guys can see that, 4400 I don't really want to do it. I don't really want to do that, but I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyway. So I'll go ahead and write 4400 And the only reason why I'm okay with doing it for this month instead of just doing 4000 is because I do have this extra week here. Otherwise, I would just reduce it to 4000 and keep it moving. All right. So the next thing that you need to do is go ahead and draw lines. Like so. And I'm going to zoom you guys in just a little bit. All right. Okay, so the very first week, I don't have any bills that are due until this payday. So essentially what you end up doing is you write down your bills for whatever bills are going to be covered by this paycheck, which means any bills that I have due any time from really the 2nd until the 8th, 
is what I put down and then from the 9th to the 15th and the reason why I add a day that it starts is because even though these are my paydays on the night uh on sorry on the Fridays it doesn't get into my account until Saturday okay so because I have nothing else due this week I'm just going to go ahead and write in the budget of 180 and I will turn on the turn up the brightness here so you guys can see. So what you want to do on the right side of the column is basically start subtracting your expenses from your projected income. Now, if you are somebody who gets paid on a biweekly basis, all you have to do is just do one column, two columns, and that's it. And you do the same exact process. So at this point, I'm left over, I'm left with $620 for that week. And that's that. So for this week, I, let me go ahead. I'm going to write my federal taxes up at the top. And I'm actually not going to put that into this budget. And I will tell you guys why in just a bit. Okay. So we have Vimeo for $59.99. Then we have MailChimp for $10. And oh, the other thing that I always do is I go ahead and transfer my money out from my rent the second week of every month again because this is usually my bigger pay weeks. So what I actually end up doing is I literally take my rent money, I transfer it out of my checking account into a savings account so that it can gain a little bit of interest for these three or you know two or three weeks that it'll be sitting in my savings account before I actually pay my rent and also the reason why I do that is because that helps me that helps to keep me from spending the money I'm not a big spender whatsoever but you know sometimes when you aren't accounting for your uh, bank account being so high because you haven't paid some of your larger bills that can cause you to overspend so if you're somebody who has a problem with overspending um, I would highly suggest that you do this process uh, like I do. So I transfer it to my Ally Savings account. And then once it's time to pay rent, I transfer the money from my Ally Savings to my Ally Checking. Swipe my card at Walmart, get my money order, and I pay my rent. So this should be the last thing. And then so the only other thing we have left for this week is the budget of 180 So let's go ahead and start subtracting. So here we're left with 1940.01, 1, 1930.01, $1,119.31. And then we subtract the budget for the week and we're left with 939.31. And that's that for that week. So moving on, for this week we have, all right, so I'm going to actually bring it back because I did forget to go ahead and write in my internet here um, for $44.99 again because it's due on the 15th, which means that this 15th check cannot cover it because it won't hit my account until the following day. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off. So now we're at 894.32. Okay. So now we're here for the December 15th check. We have progressive. And that is 108.17. We have my chiropractor for $70. And then next we have HostGator for $11.95. And that should be, no. Then we have Spire for $60. And then we have my affiliate program for $50. So go ahead and start subtracting that. 
691.83. And also, of course, remember to add your budget, which again includes your groceries, personal, all of that stuff. And this is a really simple process and I literally do it every single month. Doesn't take a lot of time whatsoever, I promise. Okay, so the next paycheck we have, we have the financial success membership and I wrote that way too close to the line, sorry. For $34.95. Then the roadside assistance is $7.99. Then we have Amarin, which is the electricity for $60. And that's going to be it for that week. So $465.05. dollars $457.06. 39706 and 217.06. And now we're at the very last week. So this is gonna be the week where it's gonna be a negative, and I already know this. Okay, so what we have here, the first thing we have is my car note with BMO Harris, and that is 262.53. Then you have the property taxes, which are $269.27, and then we also have the budget of $180 again. All right, so let's go ahead and start subtracting this. So we have $300 minus $262.53. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and use a red pen, if it works, which it does. So we're at negative 231.80, and then we have to subtract the budget. So we're at negative 411.80 for this week. So we're going to go ahead and reconcile this. So the best way for you to reconcile, um, essentially, is for you to figure out which week is going to be best for you to pay the certain thing that's making it negative in a different week, okay? So essentially right here with my car note and my budget, these two added up is still going to be more than 300, but it's okay um, because I over budget or overestimate for my budget and it's not like I can buy groceries the previous week or something like that. Now, if there's something like some kind of shopping that I'm going to do, I could do that in the previous week um, instead of waiting until this last week to do it. But you just kind of never know with that. So the best thing for me to end up doing is for me to take my property taxes and instead of paying them out of this week, it's best for me to actually pay it up here in my second week of the month. Why? Because I have 894.32 left over this week. So I'm going to zoom you out just a little bit so you can kind of see the whole thing. So at this point, I'm just going to put an R next to this expense here, which means reconcile. And I'm going to end up putting that expense up here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and write in the 269.27. And I don't know why I keep writing it so close to the dog online. Okay, so 894.32 minus 269.27 will leave us with 625.05, <coughs> excuse me, in this week. And then what we have to do is we have to add the 231.80 Back in down here, so we'll do 411.80 plus 
and that's negative 411.80 plus 231.80 will leave us with $180 negative here. And I should have wrote that in red. So I'll go ahead and do this here. So as you can see, I am positive in pretty much every week except this bottom week down here. And let me scoot out a little bit. Um, and this is okay with me. So now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to write out uh, the amounts that I have left over for each month or not month, week. So we have 620, 625.05, 319.88, 217.06, and then we're going to subtract 180 there. So let's see what we get. So we get 1781.99 and then we subtract the 180 that we're over in this week and we are left with 1601.99. So this essentially is how much money I have where I can save, I can put towards debt and all of that good stuff. Uh, just to give you guys kind of like a little, I guess, preview of what I do plan to do with this money. I did start my sinking fund this month in November. For my income taxes, I plan to put $200 a month towards that. Um, and then I try to pay off about $862.53 towards my car. This is basically my $262.53 minimum payment plus an extra $600 that goes towards the principal. So if we take the $1601.99, minus the 200 that goes to the sinking fund, minus 862.53, we are left with 539.46. So this is pretty much the surplus that I will have this month. And of course, this will not cover my federal taxes of 1765.83. So I have pretty much two options to pay my federal taxes. I will either Take the money from my mini emergency fund. I am not on the Dave Ramsey plan where I only have $1,000 in my savings. I actually had 2000 uh, not 2000 $12,000 in my savings. I took 2000 out in November for a no-risk six-month investment. And so when I get the money back from that plus the profits, I'll just put my $2,000 back into that account and do whatever I want with the rest of the money. Um, but I have... At this point, my $3,000 mini emergency fund is fully funded. So what I plan to do is, excuse me, I plan to take the $3,000 in my mini emergency fund, go ahead and pay off the taxes so that I don't continue to accrue interest, which will leave me with 1, 2, 3, 4, 17. This will leave me with this much money in my mini emergency fund. If I do this, what I'll end up doing is just putting money back into my savings to fund it back and it'll take me probably about three months with everything else I'm doing with my money. It'll probably take me about three months to put the money back in here. I don't project that I will have any kind of emergency that I'll need the money for, um, but on top of that, I'll still have like 11, no, not 11, I'll still have about eight thousand dollars left in my savings after doing this so that's an option and i honestly believe this is going to be the option that i choose because i just have a thing about paying all these late fees and no payment fees and stuff like that so this was my december budget with me you guys were able to see me budget out my everyday expenses like my groceries personal restaurant you guys were able to see me lay out all of my bills on the monthly layout and then you were able to see me plan out my paychecks for the month so i hope that you enjoyed this video please this blah, please give this video a thumbs up and share this video with anybody you know who needs to see this type of planning so that they can get their finances on track share 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 this video like this video and i want to thank all of you all who have been watching my videos since i started 
posting videos a couple of months ago and rebooting my channel and everything after not posting for three years. So thank you so much for your support and I will see you in the next video.